Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Farmer's Kitchen presented by Spinney's with me Helen Farmer on Dubai Eye 103.8. This is the must watch and indeed listen foodie show. So if you need some inspiration in the kitchen, then you're in the right place. We're gonna head into Spinney's, pick up some of the finest Spinney's ingredients, the organic, the free ROM range, and of course, super fresh too. For taking them to the kitchens of the Hyatt Regency Dubai Creek Heights. So let's get cooking, find out what we're doing. we need more fish in our diets but honestly it's one of the things I order most when I'm out at a restaurant because I'm a little bit intimidated about what to look for in store and how to prepare it at home. Thankfully our chef today and the team at Spinney's are on hand to share some expert tips and tricks on how to select the best fish and what to do with it when you get it at home. to be joined in store now by Badr Mavarek. He is in charge, he's the chief exec of Fish Farm right here in the UAE. Yes, that's right. Fish Farm here in Dubai. Welcome Badr, how are you? Thank you very much, good morning. How We've got you? some beautiful sea bream in front of us, but before we get into what to do with it and what even it tastes like, can you tell us a little bit about the journey of getting fish to the shelf here in Spinney's? What's the background story? So this is the, the fastest fish you can get, fresh fish to see uh, spinnies. It takes you from harvest up to here, around two hours to three hours. That's, that is incredible. I mean, yeah. the fact it's fish obviously is so important because we know with other countries that it can take days to even get into the country, never up mind onto the shelf. Minimum, yeah. What impact does that have on taste? Obviously food safety is a big thing for spinnies, but Definitely. for the end consumer, what, what's the taste difference? It, it, uh, the most uh, uh, important thing about fish is to have it fresh. This is it's not like meat, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it needs so people put it in two days in freezer, just to uh, before defreezing it and bringing it over here. But we we don't have any kind of freezer. We don't have a freezer facility in fish farm. No, no, we don't have any kind of. We just have a, a small ice box. We fill them up immediately from the sea and straight by the cars to, uh, to, the, to the market. So you can see uh, this is still the, the salt of uh, Fajera Sea is over there, you know. It's still on it's it. It's still on it. It cannot become more fresher than this. Really, really excited to see what Tom Arnell is going to be doing with this in the kitchens at the Hyatt Regency by Creek. Father, thank you so much Welcome. for joining us. So we have got everything we need from our shopping list here at Spinney's. Of course, some beautiful fresh fennel, that organic olive oil, coconut milk. Have you guessed what we're creating yet? We're gonna be in the kitchens next at the Hyatt Regency Dubai Creek Heights and cooking up a storm with one of the UAE's actually best known chefs and truly someone who's changed the face of Dubai cafe culture. We've got some fresh veggies and the star of today's show, that beautiful sea bream from right here in the UAE. Stay with us on Farmer's Kitchen. We'll be cooking up a storm next. And don't forget, you can watch as well as listen on DubaiEye138.com. So stay with us, we're heading to the kitchens. Thank you. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Farmer's Kitchen, presented by Spinney's with me, Helen Farmer on Dubai Eye 103.8. You can watch as well as listen. Head over to the website to see what's happening in the kitchens here at the Hyatt Regency Dubai Creek Heights. Joined today by Tom Arnell. He is a chef, co-founder and managing partner at the Bull and Rue Group. So you will know their food and coffee at the likes of Tom and Serge, of course, some of us, Common Grounds and Brunswick too. We're having a special look at seafood and we've got some amazing organic sea bream picked up from Spinney's along with some lovely fresh fruit and veggies too. So... Tom, I have got to be honest, I always find the fish counter a bit of an intimidating place to go. <laughs> so what do we need to know when it comes to choosing um, a bit of seafood, the star of our dish today? Yeah, right. So this is obviously beautiful, fresh um, sea brim. So we can see that the eyes are very clear. Um, this, the, underneath the gills, you can check, and it's quite nice and bright pink and red. That is a telltale sign that this stuff is, uh, is beautiful and fresh. And you can ha obviously ask 
the fishmonger of course and all the just, questions absolutely just just ask i'm sure the guys there will be uh, and girls will be very happy to help you but also just making sure that there's a beautiful shine or a beautiful sheen over the the skin of the fish as well okay. so we've also got some chickpeas some cabbage some fruit some pickled fennel some herbs, tomatoes too. So tell us, what are we going to be creating today, Tom? Yeah, okay. So this is another one of my favorite dishes. Um, it's super healthy. Um, soup, you know, it's for your everyday routine. Um, so basically, we're going to fill it the, the sea brim, and we're going to serve it with a cabbage and apple and wasabi slaw. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going to do a little chickpea sort of little salad with um, some preserved lemon, um, a, herb, a herb salad on top of the fish, uh, and then we're going to do a little cucumber salsa as well. Um, and yeah, I'm going awesome. to show you how to fill up the, the fish and, well, and cook it on this beautiful grill here as well. So. And we do, of course, have this, uh, the hot grill here, but you can be able to do this at home. We'll be telling you how to do that very, very shortly. So let's get stuck into this fish, she let's said, with a note of trepidation. Uh -huh. Right, you take one. Okay, Tasha. no worries. Have a look. Cool. So we're going to fill up this first, are we? Yeah, let's have a look. Okay, great. All right. So what I'm do you need? Well, first of all, a very sharp knife, clean, dry hands. You don't want to make sure that uh, you, know, you don't have any danger of slipping. But basically what you want to first do is make an incision just across the top of the gill here. Um, so you can find where the fins were. The guys at Spinney's have uh, taken the scales off of this fish. They've taken the, the, the tail and the fins off it and gutted it as well. So it's ready to fill it. But we want to sort of cut on the sort of like a, a 45 degree angle almost. And just make sure we're getting all of the meat all the way up until uh, the top of the head. And then we're going to make an incision just behind the head uh, and run our knife really nice and tightly along the top of the spine. And um, once we do that, we're gonna, you can see how I'm doing that there. That is really going to make sure we open the fish up, get all the meat off of it, and it should come off fairly easily. Um, I think you're like right. This. Sharp knife, absolutely crucial here. Now, yeah. if you're not experienced or perhaps intimidated, or maybe you've got a special occasion and it's not the right time to be learning how to fillet a fish, um, the guys at the fish counter and spinnies can do this for you. Absolutely. Um, so you'll just have your beautiful fillet ready to go and ready to cook. I'm lucky enough to be cooking with uh, one of the best chefs in the UAE, so I'm going to let him and his sharp knife do all the action. So you've got your fillet there, so that looks yeah. absolutely impeccable. Yeah, I've done that one okay. That's good. I'm happy Phew. with that. <laughs> all right, so we've got one there. Um, we've got that fillet put aside. What is next, chef? Okay, so I'm going to get you to make the cucumber salsa. Oh, okay? no. Okay. So it's literally just... Um, Slicing this cucumber up and just um, putting it into nice little um, brunoise. Do you know what a brunoise is? I've never heard of a brunoise. Okay, so it's basically little uh, little cubes, tiny little cubes, okay? Tell us about your training. Do you, you're, you're using phrases like brunoise. Yep. Uh, how kind of traditional was your own training and where did you, uh, where did you learn your, your skills? Yeah, well, I'm actually at a modern uh, French fine dining restaurant in Australia uh, called Vue de Monde. Um, at the time when I was working there, it was uh, the number one restaurant in the world. So wow. Then, sorry. Cut that out. That wasn't right. <laughs> it was the, no, the number, number one restaurant in Australia. Wow. Um, and I think we we're number 77 in the world at the time. So I got some fantastic uh, training there and how to really learn um, a lot of the, um, you know, the basic fundamentals of modern French Is cooking. that a Brunoise? That's perfect. Okay, yeah, that's great. good. So yeah. I've done some little uh, kind of cubes. Um, and what was the environment like working in one of the, the top restaurants in the country? Are we talking the crazy hours that we we think of for chefs? Um, yeah, no, it was, um, it was cutthroat, you know, was it's, it? it's, it's a lot of hours, um, it's a lot of pressure, um, but for a young chef like me at the time, I, I really needed something where I was going to learn a great work, work ethic. So was it super intense? Yeah, it was pretty intense. Got an apple, we've got some cabbage, we've got cucumber, how do you want this tomato sir? Yeah, again, just dice it up nicely. Uh, and the same with the onion. You can do the onion. Uh, I'll do the onion for you. I have zero no skills worries. when it comes okay, to... Okay, that's uh, fine when it comes to, to knife skills. No worries. Um, so having worked under the likes of Shannon Bennett and you know, some, really, some really great mentors over the years, yeah. what kind of boss do you think you are now? Um, well, I like, I like to think that I'm a constructive one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, my success um, is, is determined by the success of my staff members and, and making sure that they're all well trained and that they are living and working in a happy environment. Um, you know, we, uh, we really try and, you know, make... That was actually one of the reasons that we closed Tom and Serge um, every day at four o'clock is because we wanted to give the staff the night off. But no, but I think that's a really interesting move because, well, it, I mean, it also makes financial sense, if, you know, when you think about when people are coming in. Yeah. But you want people to be happy to be there. You know? Yeah, that's very true, yeah. And yeah. can I ask something about recruitment? What do you look for in, um, in a young chef wanting to join Bull and Roo? Uh, we look for someone who is in this for the long haul. We want someone who... 
you know, knows or thinks that there's going to be a career in this mm -hmm. and that they, um, they, they see themselves working in hospitality and, you know, potentially opening their own restaurant in years to come. Because ultimately you want people who've got skills, but you can teach skills. A lot of it so comes down to attitude as well, right? That's, that's correct, yeah, yeah. We, we, can, we can teach skills, but they've just got to want to have the desire to want to, you know, be in the top restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, and if they have that and they have the hunger for it, it can transform their lives. Um, and that's, um, that's what it, it transformed my life mm. uh, because I wanted to do it when I was younger. And it's, um, it's, it's done great things to me in my career and, and my family, so. So some very so finely onion. diced onion going in, my not so finely mm. diced tomato going in for this salsa too. Yep. Um, and this is going to be our cucumber salsa. Yep. So super fresh flavors. You've got your slaw on that side too. We are cooking in the kitchen with Tom Arnell of Bull and Roo on a brand new episode of Farmer's Kitchen. Do get in touch with the show if there's anything you would like to learn more about. Maybe you've got a question for chef or you want to see a different chef cooking up some different cuisines. Let us know what you'd like from future series. You go to the website DubaiI1038.com. You can message us on 4001. Use that Dubai I app too. And let us know what have you found in Spinnies recently that's got you really excited. Is there a dish is there an ingredient that is making your life easier and more delicious? When we come back, we're going to be getting that beautiful bit of organic sea bream on the hot stove, pulling all together our dishes, and I cannot wait to have a taste. We're having a special look at seafood, and our seafood of the day is some lovely organic sea bream. We've also been creating some sides and garnishes as well. I've been putting my really limited chopping skills to the test with a cucumber salsa. The very finely diced onion was done by Tom. And Tom, uh, what's in your slaw? Okay, so this is just white cabbage uh, and some apple. Uh, and we're gonna, we've are gonna we already made a dressing, um, actually, which is wasabi, honey, uh, and some olive oil. Oh, wow. Can I have a little taste of that? Of course. So with, when it comes to wasabi, um, in what form do you buy it and how, and how best to use it? Because heavy-handed wasabi can be... Yeah, so you can, you can obviously buy it as a, as a, as a whole piece, but then you, and you can grate it with a microplane, uh, but we actually oh. use it as a powder. Um, That's, um, you can tell it's actually a powder because it's so silky. Yeah, yeah. Delicious. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've got our dressing. What's next, sir? What do you need? Okay, so um, what we're going to do is if you want to dress the salad, so you can use um, just some of that and so, yeah, dress so that this, with that. So yep. the, uh, right. the honey wasabi is going onto the yep. cabbage just and apple. As, as much as you feel. Oh, see, I like, I like a dressing, so I'm going to go uh -huh. quite heavy with this. So a good couple of tablespoons. And I'm going to really finally dice up this uh, preserved lemon. And so how do you preserve a lemon? Uh, okay, so preserved lemon is just literally just salt. Um, so you, yeah, so you don't need anything else other than salt and some spices, um, you know, star anise, cinnamon, clove, uh, things like that. And how long does it take? Uh, well, it can take probably about two weeks um, is the best wow. time to leave it uh, to make sure you're getting the most out of it. Mm. Um, that's oh when the goodness. flavors really start to develop. They become salty and sweet rather than bitter. Um, and they're just so versatile, so you can put them in literally everything, um, which is great. So. Just had a sneak peek of some of this apple and uh, cabbage slaw with that dressing. Oh yeah, it's good, is it? Yeah, because the apple's so sweet. And especially with this that kind of preserved pickly, it really does get the mouth going. And I know we've yeah. got some pickled fennel as well. Yeah, yeah. That's salt, fat, acid, heat, all, you know, all coming together in this dish. Yeah. Yep. So we've got our preserved lemons yep. and some chickpeas going yeah, some in. Yes, chickpeas. So I'm just going to borrow your you spoon. Can take the spoon. So yeah, the the idea of this dish is that we just get a lot of freshness going on, which is why we've chosen the uh, the preserved lemon. So some olive oil going yep, in a there. Bit of olive oil. Yep. And then um, we're pretty much ready to go. We'll put a little bit more olive oil into the uh, into the salsa as well. Um, and a little, little mix. With and my a little hands. bit of lime juice also. So maybe if you want to put that in. Yeah, we'll give that a squeeze. A little bit of lime juice Thank there. You, sir. There you go. And then I'm going to start to season and cook the fish. So this is where it gets a bit more fun. Go on, I want to hear a sizzle. <laughs> so I'm going to cook it pretty much the same way as what I would if I had like a flat uh, top barbecue. Okay. So I'm just going to grab or my Or could you do towel. it in a pan as well? Um, yeah, absolutely. You can do it in a pan. Um, I like grilling it just because you, you can use less oil um, and, um, you know, it comes off uh, really quite healthy. So, um, yeah, you've just got to be quite careful with how you treat it. Mm -hmm. uh, use enough heat so that um, the fish does not stick as well, which is a big thing. So it's very hot. It's a very thin piece of fish. This will not take long at all. No, it won't. So you, you can just see what I'm doing here as well. I'm just trying to hold it down Keep so it that flat. we don't get it, we, so that we don't get it to, um, to curl up. And this whole piece of fish can pretty much cook on that one side. Um, if and you it'll get cook all the way right. through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll sort of flip it right at the end here and see how it's 
it's not sticking. Hopefully we get a nice texture on that. And then a little bit more salt on the top. Uh, on that one side. Looks pretty good. It smells absolutely delicious. So we're yeah. doing one portion today, but some of these salads I'm sure will... Well, I'm, I'm picking at them, so they might not even yeah. make it to the plate. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to trends that you're seeing with customers ordering in your cafes and restaurants, we're doing sustainable fish today, but I know vegans become a huge thing for you guys yeah, as well. Definitely. You, you did your uh, vegan iftar over Ramadan. How popular was that? Yeah, it was amazing, actually. It was, it was such an awesome uh, thing to see so many people really coming out for a... Uh, for quite healthy meals, you know. Mm -hmm. Just gonna add a little bit more olive oil to this. I think it's interesting because, you know, veganism, you can, you can be an unhealthy vegan. You know, there are certain, like, you know, biscuits and snacks and things that are vegan but aren't necessarily healthy, but there's a lot of education to be done around dishes that are actually yeah. quite easy to put together. We think of it being expensive and, and difficult, but what are some of the vegan dishes that you guys are serving up and are going, going really well? Yeah, we, um, the vegan rice wraps um, yes. that, we've, uh, that I've shown you before. Um, and um, yeah, we're actually doing a lot of different things with um, different fruits um, and, and serving um, things that take the same texture as like what a meat would. Like a jackfruit? Um, like a jackfruit. Cauliflower is also great. Uh, and some things like that where we're getting really creative and trying to uh, do dishes that um, just make people excited. Because, you know, vegan food, it, it ne it's, it's amazing. Vegetables are amazing. But you've just got to use them well and make sure you use a lot of different flavor combinations to get them right. Get creative. That fish has come off and it is it smells absolutely incredible but you can see just how crispy that skin is yeah so i've taken that off a little bit early as well and uh, that'll keep it. cooking through a little bit okay um and it should be cooked all the way through nicely um without um you know having to overcook it we've just put some yogurt on the plate this is just um simple yep. greek style yogurt, greek style yogurt. Yep. Yep. um and that's just been smeared about in a chefly fashion yep. uh, what is going on the plate next chef okay so now we're going to put everything together so we're going to do um some of these chickpeas uh, so we're the chickpeas, a little bit of olive oil and the preserved lemon yep, too. Yep, so we're going to put the chickpeas on and they're going to sort of just be garnished around the bottom of the plate. And then we're going to do some of the coleslaw. I don't want so to give you this yep. coleslaw. I want to go <laughs> and eat it all myself. It's pretty tasty, isn't it's it? It's really, really delicious. Because when you said wasabi, I was thinking that's going to massively overpower everything in that bowl. It doesn't. Yeah, well, it's, it's the honey that sort of counteracts it. So, um, you know, obviously, it's, a, it's, it's not an everyday combination to do preserved lemon, wasabi, and honey. Um, but these, these two things in this dish work really it's well really together. It's really zingy, really yeah, spring-like. Yeah, yeah, so excuse the hands. They're very clean. That's all right. I trust you, Chef. <laughs> uh, we're just going to get some of this uh, slaw and put it on top here. And then... We are going to put the fish on top of that. So remember, the apple in that makes it really nice and tart as well. So that's, uh, that's one of the most beautiful bits of it. We're going to use some of this, um, this lettuce as well, some of this cos lettuce. So just a little, little baby lettuce. Yep. And that's just uh, as an added little extra garnish to um, you know, bring a little bit more um, crunch and uh, freshness to the dish. It's funny because there's, so there's a bit of a snobby around iceberg, but I guess if you treat anything. And interesting, interesting in London, a big thing for a while was iceberg lettuce with uh, salad cream in some of like the, the biggest restaurants. Yeah, that's very true. Right? It's like yeah. people love a bit of retro. <laughs> that's very true. So our lettuce is on the plate. We've put that beautiful, crispy skinned sea bream on there as well. Yep. So next. Next, we're, we're going to put some of this cucumber salsa and just spoon it on top. So again, this is just a really nice everyday sort of cafe style dish that you can sort of eat. You know you're getting um, really fresh, good quality ingredients and uh, it's really good for you. Farmer's Kitchen presented by Spinney's with me, Helen Farmer on Dubai 103.8. You can watch as well as listen, head over to the website, see what's happening in the kitchens here at the Hyatt Regency Dubai Creek Heights. Tom Monell is with us today, chef, co-founder, managing director at Bull and Roo Group. We have been creating a delicious seafood dish. Just put the final touches on there, chef. Tell us a little bit about the herbs that have gone on top. Yeah, so the herbs have just gone in to really freshen this dish up. Um, so chives, parsley, coriander, mint, dill, uh, and a little bit of basil, and um, yeah, this it really just makes it uh, pop. This looks up and smells, I have to say, absolutely phenomenal. Now, everything we've got from uh, Spinney's is obviously available on your shelves, but if you really can't be bothered, you can get this on one of your menus. <laughs> absolutely, at all the Common Grounds venues. I've been really excited about delving into this one because it is organic sea bream from Spinney's, plus a whole range of fresh herbs, and some beautiful little extra touches. As I'm digging in, can you just recap, Chef, and tell us what's on the plate? Yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, as I said, one of my favorite dishes on our menus at Common Grounds. Um, so it starts off with a little bit of Greek yogurt on the bottom. Um, then we've got a chickpea and preserved lemon uh, sort of salad. 
Um, then we go on with um, a wasabi, apple, uh, and honey mm. slaw. Um, and then on top of that, we have the sea brim, like we, we've just um, sort of pan seared on this flat grill here. Oh my goodness, um, this is amazing. And then a cucumber salsa, pickled fennel, and then really, really, really fresh herbs uh, and a big, uh, big piece of lime. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> so full of flavor. And it's, it was actually really quick. Yeah, it was. It, it doesn't take much effort at all to put this together. Uh, and that's one of my favorite things about it is that it's, uh, it's, it's one of those everyday meals. It's not going to, you know, fill you up too much. Uh, it's not going to make you feel lethargic or heavy mm. for the afternoon if you want to have it for a lunch or something like that. And we are looking at, at seafood and thank you to the experts at Spinney's for sharing their knowledge on this episode. If you missed that, head over to the podcast page, head over to the website. You can catch up on everything you need to know about that delicious organic sea bream raised here in the UAE. Chef, thank you so much for feeding us, giving us some ideas and inspiration and really demystifying You've been filleting the fish today. Of course, the guys at Spinney's can do that for you. So maybe step away from what we're usually used to cooking. And it took, it took minutes. Thank you for bringing these flavours together. You're welcome. Thank you, Helen. Thanks, Chef. Thank